2068, 2068, I love you, Lord, and we lift our voices. Stand as you're able. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul. from the back of the bulletin. Uh, <clears throat> Monday evening, 6.30, Boy Scouts, Tuesday, 10 a.m., Vacation Bible School Leaders Meeting. And we'll probably, every... Try to set up everything and see where we're going to have a speech class. All right. And 6.30 that evening is Cub Scouts. I want when... to make a correction. Later, sure. Please. The Get Involved Meeting is Wednesday, July the 9th. I was fixing to ask about that. I noticed. <laughs> Thank you, though. On Wednesday, 6 o'clock is uh, United Methodist Youth Fellowship, and 6.30 is the Get Involved meeting, and everybody needs to be there. Oh. We want your thoughts and ideas on how we can uh, spread, be true disciples of Christ. Yes. Thursday, 1 o'clock, is the Grief Support Group meeting. 1 o'clock. And dates to remember coming up. Uh, July the 14th through the 18th will be Vacation Bible School. Uh, two weeks, the 20th will be another breakfast. And the 27th will be a church council meeting and luncheon immediately after church at 11 o'clock. And also today, immediately after church, we are going to have an administrative council meeting right here in this very location. And we're planning on it being a short meeting. So, uh, but we have a couple of pieces of business that we need to attend to. So if you could stay for that, it would be appreciated. Anyone have any additions to any of these that they'd like to add or any questions you'd like to ask on any of it? Has anyone celebrated a birthday or anniversary? The service looks a little different today. Most of the service is drawn from the uh, first few uh, pages in the hymn book. Uh, lots of it is found here in the bulletin. So you have your bulletin in hand. The greeting comes next. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The risen Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. Last Sunday we had some hymn favorites. And I mentioned to you that I have a favorite that we'll have to sing if you don't choose one. Well, I didn't get a chance to sing my favorite, so here it is. <laughs> Number 400, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Let's stand as we are able. Come Thou 
fount of every blessing, turn my heart to sing thy grace. Bring the mercy never ceasing, cause our songs of loudest praise. Teach me song, melodious song, and some of our flaming tongues of love. Praise the fount fixed upon it, mouth of thy redeeming blood. Here I raise By thy good pleasure, saves me to arrive at home. Jesus, help me when I'm stranger. I am of God. He should rescue me from danger. Interpose his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a feather. Daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a feather, by my wandering heart to thee. From to wonder, Lord, I feel it. From to thee, the God I love, here's my heart. Take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you no secrets are hidden. <coughs> Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We have children's time. We invite the children to come forward and participate in this. Hi, John. There's my child. He looks a little grown, but he's visiting today. And we are delighted to have you with us, John. Thank you. Good morning. It's good to see you guys, and you too. Did you all have a good fourth? Lots of popping and banging and fireworks? Yeah, we did too. Well, today we are going to do Holy Communion, and you know, you've all done it before. Do you know why we do Holy Communion? Because... When Jesus had his last supper with his disciples, before he was crucified, he said, remember me. Every time you take bread, it is like my body that is going to be broken for you. Every time that you take wine, which we use grape juice, which is, you know, that's what wine's yeah. made out of. <laughs> yeah. This is my blood that I've shed for you. And so we call communion, we give communion a call to Jesus' table because it is Jesus that we are remembering in the taking of the bread and in the drinking of the juice. And Jesus said, be sure you do this often. It's another way we have of remembering who Jesus was and exactly what he did for us. What do you think other things that Jesus did for us might be? Mm hmm. I kind of suspect he is. And I kind of suspect when you were crying, Jesus was right there with you, telling you that, that Uno's in a, a better place right now. But, you know, he does that for big people, too. Because sometimes we lose people we, we love. And sometimes people we love become seriously ill. 
And when, when we are upset about that and worrying about that, then we know that Jesus is right there beside us, loving us still, telling us it's going to work out one way or the other, but it will work out in the way God wants it. Let's say a prayer this morning. Thank you, Lord God, that we can come to communion with glad hearts, remembering you and what you have done for us. Thank you that you are with us every day of our life, that whatever we go through, you are right there with us. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you look in your bulletin, there's the prayer for illumination. We are preparing to hear the word of the Lord. This is a service of invitations, uh, and that's the theme of the uh, scripture readings and of the message this morning, the invitation. We have received an invitation to worship in spirit and in truth, an invitation to sing praise, an invitation to pray, an invitation to hear and read the word, and to hear the word proclaimed. Soon we'll have an invitation for prayer, an invitation for giving, an invitation to participate in Holy Communion, to celebrate Holy Communion. These are all invitations that we receive and respond to. Let's read this prayer together. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Genesis has the story of the calling of Rebekah, which is Isaac's wife, uh, the invitation to her. Uh, Paul in Romans wrestles with God's invitation to Paul, and you know how rocky that was. And then Jesus in the gospel talks about uh, God's invitation to us and sometimes our neglect of that invitation. Hear the word of the Lord. <clears throat> our first reading from Genesis will be reading from chapter 24, verses 34 through 38, 42 through 49, and 58 through 67. You'll find that beginning on page 15. <clears throat> so he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, and he has become wealthy. He has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female slaves, camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old, and he, he has given him all that he has. My master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I live. But you shall go to my father's house, to my kindred, and get a wife for my son. Contain, continuing with uh, verse 42 through 49. I came today to the spring and said, O Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you will only make successful the way I am going, I am standing here by the spring of water, that the young woman who comes out to draw to whom I shall say, please give me a little water from your jar to drink, and who will say to me, drink, and I will draw for you for your camels also, that her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my Master's son. Before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebecca coming out with her water jar on her shoulder, 
and she went down to the spring and drew. And I said to her, Please let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I will also water your camels. So I drank, and she also watered the camels. Then I asked her, Whose daughter are you? She said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Melchah bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her arms. Then I bowed my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me by the right way to obtain the daughter of my master's kinsman for his son. Now then, if you will deal loyally and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, so that I may turn either to the right or to the left. Continuing our readings, starting again with verse 58 and continuing through 67. And they called Rebekah and said to her, Will you go with this man? She said, I will. So they sent away their sister Rebekah and her nurse along with Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of myriads. May your offspring gain possession of the gates of their foes. Then Rebekah and her maids rose up, mounted the camels, and followed the man. Thus the servant took Rebekah and went his way. Now Isaac had come from Ber Lahera. Sorry about this, folks. <laughs> I tried these things. I apologize. And was settled in the Negev. Isaac went out in the evening to walk in the field. And looking up, he saw camels coming. And Rebekah looked up, and when she saw Isaac, she slipped quickly from the camel and said to the servant, Who is the man over there walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. So she took her veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her to his, into his mother Sarah's tent. He took Rebekah and she became his wife. And he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Page 857 in the back of your hymn book is Psalm 145, beginning with verse 8. It is a psalm of response to this uh, story. And uh, we'll read this responsively. The sung response goes like this. <laughs> Let us see your kindness, Lord. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord ever good to all. His compassion is over all His creation. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord. And your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom. And the power. To make known to all people your mighty deeds. And the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And your dominion endures throughout all generations. Let us see your kindness for The Lord upholds all who are falling. And raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you. And you give them your food. You open your hand. You satisfy the desire of every living thing. All the Lord's ways are just. All the Lord's doings are kind. The Lord is near to all who call. And all who call upon the Lord is true. The Lord fulfills the desire of all the faithful. And hears their cry and saves them. All who love the Lord, the Lord receives. All the wicked the Lord destroys. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless God's holy name forever and ever.
The second reading comes from Romans chapter 7, verses 15 through 25a. And you'll find that on page 120. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good, but in fact it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self. But I see in my members, uh, members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our Gospel reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11. Let's stand as we are able. Also on the uh, subject of invitations, hear the word of the Lord. But to what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For God came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. Uh, the Son of Man comes eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. Jesus comes eating and drinking, and they say, He is a glutton and a drunkard. Um... Uh, at that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The word of God for the people of God. God. And Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts and lives be acceptable to you, Lord, for you are our strength, you are our salvation. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. You may be seated. Back in Genesis 12, we remember Abraham's invitation. Abraham was invited to walk with God. Abraham was invited to go from his country, from his kindred, from his father's house to a land that God would show him, a land he did not know. It was an invitation to covenant with God. It was not just a promise that he would be the father of many nations. It was a relationship that began between the worshiper and God, between Abraham and God Almighty. Now, we read in Genesis 24, uh, Isaac has come of age, Sarai has died. And so Abraham is looking for a wife for his son, Isaac. And he doesn't want any of the local girls. 
And so he sends his most trusted servant to back home so he can find a home girl for his son to marry. And this servant is very aware that this is a tough task. And he prays along the way. He prays to God that God would show him who it is. It's a long story, and it's repeated two or three times, so the, the reading didn't uh, do it justice. We tried to shorten it a little bit. But anyway, he shows up with his ten camels, ten camels loaded with treasure, and his other the servants that are there to help him. He shows up to the wa local watering hole, and he says, All right, God, if there's someone here who's really f supposed to be with Isaac, you have to prove it to me. You... Uh, uh, I, have, I can ask her for a drink. She'll be willingly give me a drink and then she'll say, I'll water your camels. How much water does ten camels take? Anyway, he sees Rebecca the first thing and he says, may I have a drink of water? Rebecca says, here's your water. Let me water your camels. And she does that. And he says, whose daughter are you? I mean, this is remarkable. Gives her some gold. She goes back to the house, meets her father and her, her brother, Laban, and, uh, and says, guess what happened? Well, you know, the guy, ten camels, loaded with, with gold, uh, lots of servants looking for a place to stay. Laban runs out and says, why don't you come stay with us? <laughs> and uh, this is the way that, that it starts. This is the way it begins. The, the, the invitation to Rebecca, ultimately saying, Rebecca, you going to go with this guy? Yes, I'm going with this guy. And, and, they, and they go. And Rebecca, like Abraham, leaves. Leaves her country, leaves her kindred, leaves her father's house, and goes to a land that someone has yet to show her. Just as Abraham's willingness to obey fulfilled his covenant with God, so Rebecca's obedience, her response to the invitation, fulfills her covenant with God. Now I've got to tell you, I get a lot of invitations. I mean, in the mail every day. Not every day, but uh, usually every week. I get invitations uh, to have a new credit card. Woo-wee! Oh, isn't that exciting, you know? Uh, or to subscribe to a new magazine, or, or to go to this wonderful conference they're having in uh, California, or New York, or, uh, uh, or Canada, or somewhere else. I, I get all kinds of invitations, and, and uh, you know, I, I, uh, it might be interesting, but most of the time I go through my mail trying to decide, is this a bill or is this an advertisement? And I pitch it if I think it's a bill. Sometimes i got to open it because you really can't tell. You know, you really can't tell whether it's important or it's not. I have to pay special attention to, to who sent it. What, uh, you know, because sometimes I'd hate to throw away a bill that I had to pay uh, thinking that it was just an advertisement. I have to pay special attention. Well, that's really what uh, Laban and Bethuel have to do. I mean, they're, uh, they... Receive the servant. The servant says his story. You know, my master's son, his only son, to whom he's giving all of his wealth, is looking for a wife. And Rebecca's caught my eye. That's what God pointed out. Rebecca's caught my eye. And so he makes an offer. Now then, if you will deal loyally and truly with my master, tell me. If not, tell me that I may turn either to the right hand or the left. And then Laban goes, all right, let's see. Got my sister on one side. Got ten camels full of treasure and from a distant land and an opportunity to be a wife of a, a rich young man. And uh, uh, let's see, what should we decide? What should we decide? Then Laban and Bethuel, they decide the right thing. Laban and Bethuel answered, The thing comes from the Lord. We cannot speak to you either bad or good. Hey, if it comes from God, what does it matter what we think? And so they call Rebekah. 
Look, Rebekah is before you. Take her and go. Let her be the wife of your master's son as the Lord has said. Well, before that they said, Rebekah, you want to go with this guy? And she goes, yes, I'll go with this guy. Really accepting the invitation and taking the risk. The Lord has spoken. The Lord has spoken. It's always nice when we really understand that something is God's doing. We get a lot of invitations, don't we? But some invitations are God's invitations and some are not. How do you decide which is which? How do you decide uh, if this is God's doing or if it's just something else entirely? In the Gospel reading, that's what Jesus is talking about. The people in Jesus' day didn't seem to recognize what God was doing and maybe what God was not doing. I mean, Jesus was walking in their midst. He was preaching and healing and, and being Jesus in their midst. And they didn't recognize Him. They didn't understand that this was God's doing. And so Jesus preaches. But to what shall I compare this generation? They're like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute and you would not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking. They say he has a demon. Jesus comes eating and drinking and they say he is a glutton and a drunkard. A friend of tax collectors and sinners. You know, is it possible that nothing pleases us anymore? We're always looking for the little thing that negates everything, that just sticks us, that just does not work out the way we'd like it to work out. Things, we're hard to please. That's all there is to it. We're hard to please. We don't play wedding and laugh. We don't play funeral and mourn. John the baptizer comes, not eating or drinking, and he has a demon. Jesus comes eating and drinking, and he's a glutton and a wine bibber in the King James Version. That's what comes out when I quote the scripture. A drunkard. There's just no pleasing some folks. Are we like that? Is that, is that a description of who we are? Unable to tell where God is and what God is doing? In Matthew eleven twenty five, 25, Jesus comments on those who don't seem to understand and some who do. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you've hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent from those who maybe think they're wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants, to children. Let the little children come to me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Then Jesus extends his invitation for salvation to those who would pay attention. Come to me, all you who are heavy laden and weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. An invitation. An invitation to co covenant with Jesus and God. An invitation to be in, in discipleship. An invitation to admit our limitations. To accept His authority. To full-fledged discipleship in obedience and in service. See, what the gospel is asking us this morning is, are we playing games with God? Or are we answering Jesus' call to discipleship? The mission statement for the United Methodist Church is to make disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. I got news for you. The first disciples we need to make are ourselves. First, we need to be disciples before we can be part of making disciples. 
That's the invitation this morning. That's the invitation to us. The gospel asks us not to play games with God, but to get serious, to become the disciples that we are called to make in other people, in other times. Let's pray. Lord, tune our ears to hear your invitation to us to be the people you're calling us to be. We have many concerns now. We're praying for one another. We're praying for families. We're praying for children. We're praying for our church, for your church, really. We're asking you to do in us and with us perhaps what only you can do. We ask, Lord, that you would help us to hear your invitation, your call to us to be in covenant, to be in discipleship, to follow you. We hear invitations for that, but it doesn't sound like you're doing in our ears. We like to play it our own way. But Lord, the invitations are there. Invitations for church, invitations for vacation Bible school, invitation for Sunday school. All kinds of invitations are given. Help us to hear your voice in each one of them. This we pray in Jesus, our Master's name. Amen. Our hymn of commitment is an invitation hymn. Come sinners to the gospel feast. Every verse is an invitation to us. Number 616. Let's stand as we sing this together. 616. every Jesus He did not want me left behind.
ask you to please remember my brother and sister-in-law, as well as Kelly and the rest of us. But please, especially for Kelly. For Kelly, and then for your brother and sister-in-law, uh, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Are there others? Great and gracious God, we praise you for your presence here with us today, for the opportunity we have to live in relationship to you, in covenant to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We confess, Lord, that like Paul, we struggle with the relationship, with the covenant, we struggle with obedience, with discipleship. We struggle with your invitation to be your people and for you to be our God. We struggle, Lord, with the commandment to love you with heart, soul, mind, and strength and with the, the command to love our neighbors as ourselves. Forgive us of our failure, of our failings and strengthen us, forgive us, cleanse us, help us to walk the talk of Jesus Christ. Lord, we have much to be thankful for. Blessings, answer to prayer, relationships, family, kids, grandkids. So many things, Lord, we would count our blessings one by one and be a grateful people. You've also heard our burdens, our difficulties, the things we're concerned about. We thank you, Lord, that even when we walk through the valley of the shadow, we fear no evil, for thou art with us. 
So Lord, we lay our cares upon you, for you care for us, the word says. And Lord, as your people, we place ourselves in your hand and ask that you would love us and help us to live for you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Come to the time of uh, offering. We ask our offering bearers to come. Lord, for the gifts you've given us, we give you thanks. Lord, you have supplied our needs. And now, Lord, we ask that you would help us to be faithful stewards, that we would be cheerful givers, giving back to you a portion of that with which you have blessed us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God is Our invitation to Holy Communion is found at the bottom of page 7 in your hymn book. The bottom of page 7. And so we'll begin there and follow through what the hymn book says about celebrating Holy Communion. The bottom of page 7. Christ our Lord invites to His table all who love Him, who earnestly repent of sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Often I ask, us to remember that this is not our table. This is Christ's table. It's not even our invitation. It is Christ's invitation. We'd like to be able to say who can and cannot pull a chair up to this table. But that's not the way it works. We are Christ's church. This is Christ's table and Christ's invitation. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another as we pray this prayer of confession at the top of page 8. Let's pray this prayer together. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be obedient church. We have not done your will. 
we have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. The great thanksgiving begins on page 9. We normally sing it, we'll sing it today. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed Him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of His suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, He promised to be with us always in the power of Your Word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which He gave Himself up for us, He took bread, gave thanks to You, broke the bread, gave it to His disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is My body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of Me. When the supper was over, He took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let's pray the prayer He taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body in Christ, for we all partake of the one loaf. The breaking of bread is the sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is the sharing in the blood of Christ. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The table is set. The invitation is given. Put our servant, please come.
God the Father, by whose glory Christ is raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with Him in His risen life, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. And the people say, Amen. the good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep draw you and all who hear his voice to be one flock within one fold and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always and the people say Amen God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen, and settle you in the faith, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you always. And the people say, Amen. Christ, who has nourished us with Himself, the living Word, make you one in praise and love, and raise you up at the last day. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. And the people say, Amen.
on page 11 in your hymn book. About halfway down the page is a prayer. Let's pray this prayer together. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our hymn of uh, closing is, Blessed be the tie that binds. Bless me to tie that button. I invite you to stand and join hands with somebody. <laughs>